Graham here at Crashdown, and today I'm going to take you through how to upgrade a Microsoft Teams room or MTR with a manual PowerShell script. So Microsoft have recently provided this new script that enables you to upgrade it. However, there's one little trick to get it working. So check out this video and I'll show you how to upgrade it with a simple step. How do we upgrade to the latest version of the Microsoft Teams room? So what we have, as you can see here on the screen, we get the latest release of software. So a new version is released. We can wait and leave our systems to update over time and it will get the update itself. However, you might have a lab system that you want to be able to upgrade now, say, so you can test it out before it rolls out to all your systems. So how do we update it manually? Well, two ways. One, you can download the deployment kit, the MSI file, and extract that through PowerShell. And I'll put a link in uh, the description for the blog on how to do that. Or you can use the new PowerShell script to do that. And let's take a look at that in more detail. So here we have the way to manually update this. And what you can do is download the PowerShell script in this uh, link here. And it will tell you that you need to run this PowerShell script with the Skype user signed in. So normally to go to the Windows desktop and do an update, we would go to the more settings and then go to the settings and then jump over into the Windows desktop. So let's do that now and go to Windows settings. So here we are in the Windows desktop. What we can do is that I've already downloaded this file for uh, quickness. We can see here in our downloads that I have the SRS deployment kit and I also have the MTR PowerShell. So let's just bring up the website to show the instructions on how we do this. So here we have the manually update a Teams room. This is the um, PowerShell script, is that we want to run the, the file. Usually the offline app needs to run from an elevated command prompt while the Skype user window uh, runs, it's still signed in. Now run this file. And so we run it in an elevated command prompt, which we have here and we typed it in and we hit enter. So what it's going to do now is do a check. Is it ready to run? And you'll see this now on the screen in a second. So that's asking you, obviously you must run a trusted script. So we want to do R or we want to run once. So it now starts with a log file so you can check. And it's checking the version. And it actually comes back and tells you the Skype user must be logged in for the script to work correctly. So what have we done wrong? Well, we've signed out the Skype user and we are back in just as the admin user so we must sign out again and go back into the skype user so let's close close this and we'll log back on as a skype user so again we will sign out of here and we will sign in as the skype user so it's ready for the microsoft team room so as you can see it's now signing back in as it should be ready for a call so the trick here is actually we need to sign in whilst this Skype user is here. So as you can see in the documentation, it does have an option here on how to switch the admin mode and it tells you how to do that. So the trick here is you have to hit the Windows key five times. Then that will switch the user. So if you think of a normal desktop, you have fast user switching mode. This is how you do it in the Microsoft Teams room securely. So let's go and press the five times Windows key. And what happens now is, is that my screen has gone blank. It's gone to the mode of who I want to switch into. It's not replicated here on the uh, display, but I can see it on the actual screen that it has gone there. And now I'm going to select to use the admin user. So now I have gone to the touch panel and enabled that to sign in as the administrator. I now have that uh, access through there. So here I have the platform back ready, signed in again now. So let's click on the start and let's go to our um, command prompt. Remember, it must be elevated. And then we have the PowerShell script. So we run that. So again, this is asking now, do you want to confirm to run this? One thing I never showed you was is that it was actually on 4.8.25. Uh, I want to go to 4.8.31, which is what this new version is. So we just click R to uh, run this once. We know it's a trusted source, this PowerShell script from Microsoft. And again, it will then do its checks to make sure uh, is the Skype user running. So there you go. You can already see it's now gone further than it has in the previous attempt. So now it's generating the MSI and getting it ready to deploy the new MTR app. So now it's actually deploying the Skype room system app. So now it's all happy. The system is not outdated. 
it's okay. We just will simply hit exit. I always like to do a reboot after I've done an update, so we will restart the system. So now it's telling me someone else has logged in. And we know that because we did that five times Windows key to get into this side while that other user was, uh, the Skype user was signed in. So we want to restart anyway. So now you can see it's rebooting. So we'll just head into more, into settings. As you can see, we have 4.8.31. Now what does this do? This enables us to apply Windows 20 H1. However, one thing I did notice when I just went into this menu is I've got stop duplicating. That's pretty cool. That's a nice feature. So in the uh, settings, you can now do this. Previously, this was a, a config via XML you had to upload to the system, but now it's here in the UI. Well done, Microsoft. I like that. Mm -hmm.